And our Y56 point to point wireless bridge is built for long range line of sight lengths up to 15 kilometers. Hey tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. So imagine your business runs in two buildings like this and nine kilometers apart with nothing else in between but farmland. And you've got security cameras rolling, VoIP phone ringing, and inventory syncing in real time. Now all of this needs one thing, a fast, reliable connection. So our clients here price fiber solution and get a quote north of $50,000 plus months of waiting. But today, I'll show you how we solve it in a single afternoon with a Wi-Fi 6 point-to-point -point wireless bridge. We'll set it up together. Now don't get me wrong, fiber is awesome, but laying it across farmland isn't just pricey. You're dealing with trenching, permits, and potential delay. And a point-to-point -point wireless bridge solves the same problem by riding the air. No trenching, no crews. If you have clear line of sights, you can light it up fast and scale it later. And if you ever need to relocate gear or add redundancy, you don't have to dig again. You just adjust mount or add another link. And for this site, farmland means wide open views, perfect line of sights. So that's exactly where Wallace shines. So now we're in front of the demonstration board and these are our Wi-Fi 6 wireless bridge. Now Wi-Fi 6 brings two superpowers to long-range bridging, OFDMI and multi-user MIMO. In plain English, OFDMI slices the channel into small lengths, so lots of small packets, then camera status updates, forest packets can move at once without waiting in a long line. And multi-user MIMO lets the radio talks to multiple streams simultaneously, which keeps throughput steady and latency low. And together, they make long-range lengths more efficient and more predictable, especially when your network is busy. And at distances like our 9 km farmland, these efficiency gains help you squeeze the most from your spectrum to hold a stable connection when weather and noise fluctuate. And our Wi-Fi 6 point-to-point -point wireless bridge is built for long-range line of sight lengths up to 15 kilometers. And under good conditions, it can push up to 900 megabit per second. And the housing is rugged and weatherproof with IP rating that's perfect for outdoor. And on the bottom, you've got an gigabit Ethernet port to drop right into your existing switch. And the power is simple. You can power through our included Gigabit Passive PoE Injector. So we can see all the ports here. So everything is designed to be mounted, powered, and pointed with minimal fuss. So let's pretend we have one bridge at site A and one bridge at site B. And as you can see, they're mount high with a clear view of the opposite side. So now let's connect the gear at site A. So let's pretend this is the control room. We have the network video recorder and a managed PoE switch. First, we are going to power up our switch using an Ethernet cable here. This is the Gigabit port. So let's connect it to our passive PoE injector to the PoE port. And then use another Ethernet cable to connect the LAN port to our managed switch. And now we can connect our network video recorder. to our managed switch to display video footage. So this side is done. Now let's face it to the other bridge. So a long range link lives or die on clear line of sight. You can always stand where you plan to mount and visually confirm you can see the other side. No trees, no roofs in the path. So now let's move on to site B. 
So let's connect the bridge here at sides B. Again, using an Ethernet cable, connect to the Gigabit port and to the PoE port. Then use another Ethernet cable to connect the LAN port to our managed PoE switch on this side. Now we are using power over Ethernet. That means we're sending both power and data through this single Ethernet cable to our access point and the bullet camera. As you can see, our bullet camera is getting the power it needs. Then we can start adjusting our wireless bridge on this side. So we can start by loose mount so you can point now, aim generally at the far side, you can use a map or a canvas. Then, watch the signal strength indicator. Most units give you bars, and you can move slowly a few degrees at a time and pause after each adjustment so the radio can settle. Now, when you hit the peak, we can tighten up the hardware, just like this. You can do this on both sides and you've done 90% of the hard work. So now we just have to wait for the signal to transmit. All right, so now we can see our bullet camera is live. So with the Wi-Fi 6 wireless bridge, everything talks as if it were on the same long Ethernet cable. So now let's jump to the setting. We have two bridges. We have to set one unit as master or access point, and the other is the client or station. The names vary by vendor, but the idea is the same. We already set the site A bridge as a master. Now we're going to set site B as client. And in order to do it, we have to physically connect your laptop to the switch or directly to the bridge. I already did, so let's get into it. First thing first, you have to make sure your internet and your bridge is under the same subnet. Then, open up your web browser, type in the IP address of the bridge, type in the password so we can log in. So now we can see it's already connected, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through how to do it. First, go to wireless. Now when you set the bridge as SS point, we can click SS point, but now we are going to click client. Make sure the SSID are the same. And here we have the encryption and make sure you set a strong password. Now for indoor tests, we are going to set the output power to 10, but for outdoor you can max it. But now let's set it to 10 so we can search for it and don't get any disruption. And all the other settings are default. So after you do it, you can hit scan. Now we can scan for our bridge on the other side or we can type in the IP, it depends. So we can see our master bridge here, the first one. So let's hit join network. Now it take the radio a minute to link up. Now let's type in the password. So we can hit save. So now it's done. This is how you connect it to the bridge. Next, we have to go to network. So here we have the bridge. Now you can manually type in the static ID or you can use DHCP. But keep in mind, if you use DHCP, you have to download a dedicated software tool to discover the IP address. So we statically type in the IP address. 
and this is the management VLAN. By clicking it and type in your VLAN ID, you can create a security network for your bridge. All right. So now let's check out the SS point is connected already. And finally, we are going to perform a speed test. So let's open up our speed test website and let's hit start. So our hardware advertises up to 900 megabit per second, and we do. But let's keep it honest. In the real world, you budget about one third of the theoretical maximum once you factor in environmental noise and interference. That divided by three rule of thumbs put usable throughput around 300 megabit per second for planning. And at nine kilometers, you should expect results in hundreds megabit range which align with the distance curve that we use. So to give you a feel for how distance impacts speed, here's a quick reference. At 1 km, you can see around 900 megabit per second. At 2, roughly 800. Around 6, about 700. At 10 km, it drops to around 300 and by 15 km, planned for about 100. So the longer the length, the weaker the speed, simply because signal strength and signal to noise fall with distance. So for our clients, 900 span with cameras, VOIP, and inventory traffic, a few hundred megabit of reliable throughput is more than enough. So our client avoided a five-figure fiber bill and months of delay. We mounted, aligned, and linked both sides the same day. And if they expand with the third building, it's a matter of adding another bridge. That flexibility is why point-to-point -point wireless is such a strong fit for rural or semi-rural operations. And if your throughput needs to grow, Wi-Fi 7 wireless bridge are emerging with higher top speed and wider channel options. They are designed to handle more simultaneous stream with lower latency. Now, thank you very much for joining us. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop your questions below. Tell us your distance and terrain, and we'll suggest a link plan that fits. And I'll see you in our next video.